and welcome. Sorry, I was just taking my vitamins. Okay, so I'm out today, but we're still going to have a full lesson. We're continuing our lesson on dividing polynomials. Again, super, super important concept. Uh, and it looks challenging, but it's really not. It just takes a few steps. Before we jump in uh, to our lesson, let's do these warm-up problems. Now, several of you guys asked me yesterday, and I could see it was a question on more of your faces. But just to review the difference between when we're gonna when do we combine like terms, and then when we actually add our powers. Because when we combine like terms and add our powers, these are under different circumstances. So as a quick reminder, when we're adding and subtracting, when that's the operation, that's when we combine like terms. Then we just add and subtract the coefficients or the numbers in front. I add powers when I'm multiplying variables. So for example, over here, I'm multiplying my variables. I see a multiplication sign, so I'm going to add my powers. x times x give me x squared. In the second example, I'm combining like, like terms. I know because there's a plus sign. So I'm just going to add up the numbers in front. Now in this case, both of the invisible numbers are 1. 1x one plus 1x one is 2x. Right? Try the other two yourself. So for these ones, you should have decided that we're going to combine like terms for our first example. There's a plus sign, so we add the numbers in front, and they are like terms because x cubed and x cubed are the same, so we get 5x cubed. And for our second example, we see a multiplication sign, so we are going to just multiply the numbers in front, not add them, but multiply them and then add our exponents, or add our powers. So 3 plus 3 is 6. I hope that clarified um, when we're doing what for some of you. All right. So let's go back over here, do our warm-up for today. So I'm teaching you something new. Today I'm going to teach you something new in our warm-up. I know, that's crazy. Like, wow. Usually Miss Nami waits till after the warm-up. I know. I'm just on a roll today. I don't know if you know, but it's 5 a.m. You can see my time over here. So I'm teaching you something called the stacking method. And trust me, trust me, it's going to make your life easier. I love this method, but I haven't taught it to you yet. So actually, I want to change this problem slightly. Look what I'm doing. I'm adding a power of 2. So I've got 2x plus 3, x minus 1, whole squared. Now, let me ask you a question. How many factors are we dealing with in number one? How many factors or pieces that are multiplying? Well, I've got a binomial, and then I've got another binomial, but did you say three factors? If you said three factors, then you'd be correct, because I've really, really got my 2x plus 3, my x minus 1, but that x minus 1 should appear two times. So this would be the proper way to write out the problem. From here, go ahead and try, uh, go ahead and foil the right side yourself. So x times x is x squared minus 1x minus 1x plus 1. And that's the result of my foiling the last two terms, as always. Focus on the last two terms. And then we'll just rewrite, so bring down the 2x plus 3. All right, now that I have my binomial in front, I can go ahead and distribute each of these terms. So let's start with the first term. Now, this is where the new stuff is going to start happening, so pay close attention. So let's distribute our first term as usual. 2x cubed, because that's power of 1. Okay, so they multiply. I'm multiplying again. Ooh, I just realized. I hope you caught my mistake. Before distributing and making my life really difficult because I'm going to have one, two, three, four. Oh my god, that's a lot. No, before I move on, I'm going to combine my like terms. So let's rewrite this guy. Bring it down again. 2x plus 3. So glad I caught myself. Actually, I heard you protesting. That's how I knew. 
And then this one would be minus 1x minus 1x, that's minus 2x. Okay, now, okay, now we can go ahead and do our distribution as before. So let's do this. 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x. Okay, now this is where the cool stuff happens. Now instead, so I've done my first term, now it's time to distribute our second term. So instead of writing plus 3x squared over here and continuing in a long line, I'm going to just write my 3x squared underneath its like term. Like that, I've, I've stacked my like terms, x squared and x squared. Now, it's super important that you include the sign in front of each number, or else you're going to get lost and make some mistakes. So I've got plus 3x squared, and then I have minus 6x, that would line up right here. And then finally, plus 3. Since there is no other like term to go with, we'll just add it on at the end. So this is called stacking. I'm stacking the like terms. And it's a skill you need to get very good at. So now we're just going to combine them. Okay, We're going to combine them downwards. So 2x cubed just stays as is. Minus 4x squared plus 3x squared. Minus 1x squared. This gives me, just by combining them, minus 4x plus 3. And that would be my final answer. So notice the advantage. Instead of having it written out like six terms all on one line, and then having to find them and cross them out, find them and cross them out. This keeps it nice and simple. There's little mess and my personal favorite method. So why don't you try that for problem number two? Try applying the stacking method. Pause the video and give it a shot. So first things first, I have to write my binomial out in front. Psst, hint, like, oh my gosh, danger sign. It's easier to rewrite it's easier to rewrite binomial in front. So go ahead and rewrite it. It takes two seconds. I have x minus 1 times, yes, my operator is multiplication still. Okay. Now since I'm multiplying, I'm going to have to distribute just as before, one, one term at a time from the left side. So x gives me 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x. Second term time. Okay, careful, it's a negative one. It's a minus one. So all these signs should flip. Okay, so let's stack them. Minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 7. Just quick confirm, did all your signs flip? That was positive, and that was a negative, became positive, and that was a positive, became negative. Very good. Now we're just going to combine like terms. Once we stacked, we just combine our like terms. Instead of horizontally, we're going to do it vertically. Vertically means up and down. So that's just 2x cubed. It just gets rewritten. You don't have to show the circles. I'm just focusing you on what's going on. Minus 7x squared plus 12x minus 7. Ta-da. We're done. It's painless. I love this method so much. Okay. Public service announcement. Um, if you catch my mistakes, if I make a mistake and you catch my error, I will award you extra credit. Okay. So you just got to uh, message me on Remind or on Snapchat, and um, I would so appreciate it if you caught my, my error, because I probably am making a few today. I don't know. We'll see. So for our notes now, we're going to turn to page 6. Go to page 6. I'm going to continue where we left off yesterday. 
So if we're reading this uh, expression, it says 4x cubed, blah, 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 plus 7 divided by x plus 1. Now remember, the thing I'm dividing by is called my divisor. And when I set up my long division symbol, that's the guy that goes outside. Okay, the inside guy is just 4x to the 4th plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 7. Now I want to bring your attention to something new today. Before you jump in and try it yourself, I want you to notice, look at the powers on our question. Power of 4. Which power is missing? I'm going from 4. Notice I'm skipping over the x cubed term. x cubed like disappeared. Where is x cubed? And then I go from 4, I skip 3, I go 2, 1, and that's like, okay, so I've gone all the way down to 0, to nothing. Now, funny thing is, you can't actually skip a term, okay? And if the question does skip a term, we have to fill it in. So we have to leave a space for any missing terms. And you'll see why in a moment. Because if you don't have that space, it's going to completely throw you off later when you're doing your calculations. So here's what I mean by leave a, leave a space. We're going to rewrite this. Sorry for those of you with pen. I, I know I'm super inconsiderate. I should have thought of that before. Okay, we're going to rewrite this. But we're going to leave a space for x cubed, which really means we have 0x cubed. That's the space. That's the space I'm talking about. And then continue the problem from there. Plus 3x squared minus 5x minus 7. Okay. So now, just as before, we're going to focus. So, I mean, now we're ready to go. So we're just going to focus on our first terms as before. So I have an x. I need a 4x cubed. So the question you should be asking yourself, and you can go ahead and write this in a thought bubble if you need to, is basically x times what gives me uh, the first term that's inside, which is 4x to the fourth? That's the question that you should be thinking. So when you get it on a test, on a quiz, this is you, very thoughtfully. Okay, so the answer would be 4x to the third. And I'm going to line that up with my like term, like, like just like our stacking method. So notice how useful it is that we have that spot. If there wasn't a blank here, I would look. I would be looking from here to here and saying, oh my gosh, where does my 4x to the third go? So you need to leave a space. Okay, once we have that down, remember then we're just going to distribute. And we have to distribute to both terms. So put some parentheses. 4x cubed times x gives me 4x to the fourth. 4x cubed times 1, remember you got to go term 1 and term 2, gives me plus 4x cubed. Now I'm just going to, what do I do, what do I do? If I just add it downwards right now and combine my like terms, notice these combine to 8x to the 4th. That's because I've forgotten to do a key step, which is subtraction. So to subtract these, we flip all of our signs, just cross out the plus sign and put a minus. Now we can combine like terms. So please, please, please don't forget to flip signs. Okay? So what happens to our first two terms? Well, as always, they will cancel. And this becomes minus 4x to the third. Next step, you may recall, bring down the next term. Notice I didn't bring down all the terms at once. That's not how we do it in algebra. In, in our, it, that's not how we did it in fourth grade when we first learned this, and it's not how we're going to do it now. So one term at a time. Okay, so now I'm focusing again on my first term, which is x over here, and on my first term, which is minus 4x cubed. So you're asking yourself the same question. x times what gives me 4x cubed now? Answer is 4x squared, or minus 4x squared actually and then we'll distribute as before okay, remember to distribute to both go ahead 
So we get minus 4x cubed minus 4x squared. Don't forget to flip your signs. So these guys are going to cancel. 3x squared plus 4x squared is 7x squared, positive. Bring down the next term, one at a time. Okay, we're focusing again on our first terms and our first terms only, x and 7x squared. x times what gives me 7x squared? Positive 7, let me do a different color. Positive 7x. Now just keep in mind that as you go along, your like terms should always be lined up. So if they're not like terms, then you know you've made a mistake. You need to go back. 7x times x is 7x squared. 7x times 1 is plus 7x. Flip your signs. Flip your signs. That becomes a minus. Combine like terms. This cancels. Minus 5x minus 7x is minus 12x. Oh my gosh, we're almost done. I just have one more term to bring down. Minus 7. All right, same question as always. X times what? Give me minus 12x. You're so smart. Unless you didn't say that. In which case, be careful, man. Okay, so minus 12 times. Now you're going to distribute, and you have to be careful. Please, please, please watch your signs. Minus 12 times x is minus 12x. And then minus 12 times positive 1 is minus 12. Combine your like terms. No, not yet. Flip your signs. Plus. Okay, they should cancel. And here I get minus 7 plus 12 is plus 5. So 5 is going to be our remainder. Now, I want you to pause the video here and see if, look back at every step that we just did. Is plus 5. So we're done bringing down terms. That means that my 5 is actually my remainder. So let's label it. Now, how do we properly rewrite our remainder as part of our answer? See if you remember from before, it's answer plus or minus if the remainder is negative. So plus or minus our remainder over the divisor, the guy we're dividing by. Now this should have been in your notes from yesterday. So if you remember that, then you should have got plus 5 over x plus 1. So if I said, hey, do the division, give me your final answer. Well, this all, all of this, is our answer, our final answer. But if I said, hey, just find the remainder, then the answer is just 5. Look how cool that looks. Seriously, when you learn long distance, you never ever imagine you'd be doing this. This is super cool. Let's try another one. Okay, so number one thing that we have to do is scan for missing terms. Oh my gosh, I'm letting you know it, I will test you on this. It will be coming up. Scan for missing terms first. And if there are missing terms, we fill them and we leave a blank. So this is my divisor. Goes outside. And here I have 2x to the 4 plus 3x cubed. Oh my gosh, my handwriting. What's happening? Okay, 2x to the 4th plus 3x cubed minus 11x squared minus 9x plus 15. Great. So you might have noticed there's actually a missing term over here on the outside. I'm missing just an x. The funny thing is that we don't really care about what happens outside. I just want to make sure there's no missing terms in here because that's what tells me where all of my answer spots go. So I need to have a spot for every term. So we don't have to worry about the x squared minus 3, but please do get in the habit of scanning for missing terms. Okay. So let's begin. We're focusing on our very, very first terms. That's x squared. And in this case, 2x to the 4. 
x squared times what gives me 2x to the fourth power? Answer, 2x squared. And I have to line that up with my x squared. So don't automatically write it here. That's incorrect. These aren't like terms. You need to be careful where you put it. So 2x squared goes here. And now we're going to distribute. Parentheses, so you remember to get both terms. 2x squared times 2x squared, that's 2x to the fourth. And then times negative 3 is minus 6x squared. Watch my mistake. Watch out. What did I just do? I just stacked it super incorrectly. That minus 6x squared shouldn't be over here with the cubed. No, it should be lined up over here. So the same way how we lined up above the 11x squared, so then we should end by lining up underneath. Keep your like terms together, people. And notice that because there was a missing term in the middle, or missing x, we ended up with a missing term in the middle here too. Now that's going to happen every time, and it's okay. You just need to leave it blank. So now we're going to flip our signs so we can do our subtraction. And I'm going to combine like terms downwards. That cancels. I'm just going to bring down the 3x cubed. And then I'm going to combine like terms. That's minus 5x squared. As always, bring down one term at a time when you're done. Okay. So the missing term is not so hard. You just leave a blank and then bring down the term. Okay, so x squared times what gives me 3x cubed? Answer is plus 3x. Don't forget to distribute to both terms, please. That's 3x cubed minus 9x. So I'm not going to write that here. I'm going to write it over here. If you really want, you can put a 0x. It doesn't matter. Okay, Plus, minus, 0x, doesn't matter. I just like to leave it blank. Okay. Let's flip all of our signs. Let's combine our like terms. That disappears. Just bring down the minus 5x squared. And weird, this one disappeared too. Okay. So when we bring down our plus 15, now it's a little awkward. I want to have, I really want a placeholder right now. If you want to be super consistent, you can put a placeholder everywhere. Like this. But again, I'm focused on my first terms. So let's do this. I have x squared times what gives me minus 5x squared. That's minus 5. And we're going to distribute it to both. Okay, that's 5x squared minus 5x squared. Skipping the middle term. And then minus 5 times minus 3 is plus 15. Let's flip all our signs to do our subtraction. These cancel, and nothing gets brought down, and these cancel. So our answer then is really zero, and that's our remainder, zero. If I have a zero remainder, you don't have to write plus zero over x squared minus three, because zero over anything is just zero, it's gone. So this is our final answer. That's pretty cool. If I said, hey, what's the remainder? Then your answer would be zero. Okay, so our remainder is still zero. And our answer is nice and neat. Just a trinomial here. Okay, can't believe it. We're on our last problem already. So this problem is a word problem. And I, I really don't want you to freak out when you see word problems. This is the type of thinking that um, is super, super important when it comes to testing, when it comes to just general, like if you're going to calculus next year, you want to be able to think through word problems. And just generally in life, things don't come as, you know, 2x squared minus 5 long division. Like, no, the grocery clerk is not going to ask you to do that. Your job employer is not, is not going to ask you to do that in your interview, unless you're doing, like, mathematical research. But 
this isn't just how we see things in real life. So when we get problems, we want to be able to deal with them by finding, and this is the best thing I learned in all of my high school career, you want to approach word problems by finding relationships between the values that are given or between the variables given. So here's what I mean by variables given. One thing, one variable going on here is volume. Okay, That's a piece of information they're telling me. Hey, this rectangular prism, which I've beautifully drawn, has a volume of this. So immediately, I already know that I have volume equals 6p cubed minus 3p squared minus 4p plus 21. So I'm representing that as a math equation. Next, I know something about the height. What's the height? Our height can be rewritten as 2p plus 3. So I have my volume. I have my height. Now they're telling me to find the area of the base. The area of the base. So I don't know yet where this is coming from. But if I want to find the area of the base, well, I'm just going to use some, You don't be scared, use some common sense about, hey, what is it that we have drawn here? My area of the base is this like two-dimensional area right there. And I generally know my area, if I, if I see this as length, and this is my width, and this is my height, then the area of the base here is going to be length times width. So notice, they didn't tell me what the area was, but I came up with a relationship for it. By a relationship, I just mean an equation. I just mean an equation that puts it in relation with other pieces of information. Okay, so I have a relationship with area, but until I get all three of these in, in the same kind of relationship, I'm, I'm still going to be stuck. So what's the relationship now for volume? See if you can come up with a formula for volume. Remember, volume is really length times width times height. And oh my gosh, look at this. We know what the height is. I know what the height is. So if the height is 2p plus 3, I'm going to substitute it in for height. Volume is really length times width times, in this case, my height is just 2p plus 3. So I'm, gonna, I'm starting to put things in relationship with each other. Oh my gosh, have a look. My length times width. Where else do we see length times width? Ta-da! So if I'm trying to put all these three things into one relationship, then this is the point where I replace length times width width with area, or area of the base. And I'm almost done. I know what the volume is. We should just start plugging things in. So instead of saying volume on the left, oh my god, I'm just going to plug in the formula. 6p cubed minus 3p squared minus 4p plus 21. The trick to setting up these relationships is the only unknown thing should be what you're looking for. They told me, find the area. So the only thing that's unknown here should be the area. And indeed it is. Area is still there. I could call it A if I wanted to. Um, but everything else has been substituted for. So I'm ready to go. If I want to solve for area, but right now I have area being multiplied by 2p plus 3, how do I get rid of 2p plus 3? What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2p plus 3. That would be my alarm. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to divide both sides by 2p plus 3. And notice what I'm left with is, hey, my area is basically the answer to this. Oh my gosh. Is that long division? Heck yeah, it is. Area is going to be the answer to 
this long division problem, which is basically the volume divided by the height. Okay. So we need to now solve this problem. I'd like to see you tr stop the video, try it yourself. So you should be setting this up. We're going to solve for area. By doing the division over here, we're going to do the right side. So the guy that goes outside is 2p plus 3. The guy that goes inside is that long polynomial. Minus 3p squared minus 4p plus 21. Okay. And it's time to begin. Oh. Did you scan for missing terms? Because I know I didn't. Let me scan now. I have a 3, I have a 2, I have a 1. Okay, we're good to go. Good practice. All right, so focus on your first terms. 2p times what? Give me 6p cubed. That would be a 3p squared. Distribute. 3p squared times 2p is 6p cubed. And plus 9p squared. Flip your signs, subtract. Okay, so let's combine our like terms. Once we're done, we bring down one term at a time. One term at a time. And then we start the process over again. I have a 2p. I need a minus 12p squared. So if you're um, having trouble with this, focus on the, on the number first. 2 times what gets me minus 12? That would be negative 6. And then p to the power of 1 times p to the power of what will give me p squared? Well, if I have a 1, I need a 2. Remember, we're going to be adding our exponents. That would be a p to the power of 1. Just to verify, go ahead and distribute this. I mean, we're going to have to distribute it anyway. But minus 6p times 2p is... Minus 12p squared. These have to match up. Minus 6p times plus 3 is minus 18p. And now, don't forget, we need to flip our signs and combine our like terms. So minus 4p plus, that's plus 14p. Bring down the next term. 2 times what gives me 14 that would be plus 7. And I already got my p's accounted for. Okay, so I can just distribute this. 7 times 2p is 14p. 7 times plus 3 is plus 21. Ooh, this is shaping up to be a nice problem. If I flip my signs now, everything cancels. So what's our remainder? Our remainder is 0. And what's our answer? That guy. So when we said, hey, find the area of the base, well, we've just found the polynomial that represents the area of the base. It was the answer to this division problem. So the area of base equals 3p squared minus 6p plus 7. So conceptually, here's what's really going on. Since this represents length times width, giving me the, the area at the bottom there, if I multiply that by height, which is 2p plus 3, then my answer would be that super long polynomial we started with, which would be the, uh, the volume. Length times width times height equals volume which would be the 6p cubed minus 3p squared, blah, 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 blah. You could, you could actually distribute it, and you'll see that that's true. So that would give me the whole volume. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, guys, get started on your homework. Um, for homework, here's what we're doing. Go ahead and write this down. There's two parts. You are going to finish. You're going to complete the homework that was assigned yesterday on page 29 and 30. Okay, so basically you should have finished number one and number four. 
So today you're going to do number two and number three. Okay, that's one, two, that's literally three problems. You'll be fine. Plus, I have the solutions to number uh, to one of the number two questions and to number three. You can actually check on the class website to see the video for the solutions if you're still struggling. And then in addition, there will be a review assignment. Just nine problems. Did I say nine? I meant ten. Oh my God. I know I'm the worst. Ten problems that are on the Google Classroom. So you have two parts to the assignment. You have in the yellow book, and then this review assignment that is on the Google Classroom will be completed on a separate sheet of paper. Just stick it inside your green book, and I'll check it from you tomorrow. All right. See you later.